right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Not even good morning. It is noon. It is actually lunchtime. So I hope you'll take your lunch break and join us on Intercultural Spark. My name is Deanna Shaw's, and this is a show about that spark inside each of us that drives you to spark change in the world through mission-driven businesses and life projects. And I hope that you'll be inspired by the guests that I bring on the show to realize that you are more powerful than you ever imagined, and you too can make change in the world. Uh, the person who is our guest today is Hammer, uh, Hammer Holmes. There you go, Tamara Holmes. She is the creator, founder, driving force behind the Aerostar Avion Institute. And what that means is she's phenomenal. She is helping kids from the time they're in kindergarten through like careers as pilots and in aviation and is just changing the world. She's such a powerhouse and says she wants wanted to create the opportunities that she didn't have when she was a girl, you know, trying to make her way in the world. So I know you'll be totally impressed with her and please uh, welcome to Intercultural Spark. Hello, Tamara. How are you? I'm wonderful. Good morning. How are you? I am so good. And I'm so excited for you to be here. I think, you know, I'm like a total fangirl. I've known <laughs> Tamara. I'm not going to say how long because it's too long for how good we look. I think um, it will be 20 years next year. I know. I was just looking. I thought it was a mistake. Tamara uh, was actually an intern at the Department of Aviation when I was there, and I saw this book, Dynamic Women in Aviation. Was that 2015? Was that uh, 2005? That it was 2005. Yes. Yeah, so we um, met before that in 2000, in, between 2003, the 2002, 2004, and that book was done. Wow. It was finished in 2005. So I'm going to ask, just so people get a sense of kind of where you came from, I'm going to go back even a little bit further than that moment at aviation. So again, Tamara's the head of this incredible organization, is doing so much amazing work in the world. I'm going to start with the spark of your Young Eagles flight. Can you actually just talk about that for a second? And how did that inspire you to actually start this road? That is hilarious that you mentioned that because we actually just took a, a group of kids to the airport on Saturday for Girls in Aviation Day. And it was such, it's, those are always such a full circle moment for me because um, I know what those days can do, right? So one Saturday morning, my mother made me get up and go with her brother uh, somewhere i didn't even know where it was like 7 30 a.m and i had to go with my little brothers and sisters which was a disaster for any 16 year old to have to spend time with their younger siblings uh, so i have an attitude typical teenage girl the whole time uh, slamming the car door and like oh you know we get there and you know we, we pull into the museum campus downtown by the bear stadium i'm like oh this is going to be the worst day ever the field museum you know or the planetarium and we pulled over into a nondescript parking lot. Um, and I'm like, this is a far way to park from the museum. Mm -hmm. It was an airport. Right. Yeah, that was when Max Field used to Max be there. Field yeah. was there. And I had no clue that there was an airport downtown Chicago. We get out the car and um, we go in and I said, oh, my goodness. You know, it was busloads of African-American kids coming. Mm -hmm to this airport and now, now my interest is peaked like what is going on here and they's like oh they, we're giving free airplane rides to kids and i'm like no way so i forgot all of i actually forgot that my siblings were there until i saw That's pictures so funny. and like, you had never been on an airplane before at that point yes i, I have been on had, an okay. airplane oh but like but a i had never plane. been on a small plane mm -hmm. uh, and i actually had never flown a plane which was what happened that day i yep. actually got on the plane the pilot took me up and he asked me if i wanted to fly the plane and i was like yes absolutely he gave me the controls we turned the plane around and i literally was flying on the lake uh, over the chicago's uh the chicago wow. line at 16 years old and that one day that one mm -hmm. day changed my life that's amazing and, and just for people to know because that's for anyone i want to say it's like youth ages i don't know if it's like 
eight to 12. It's pretty young. Um, it's it's the, eight to 17. Eight to 17. So They're it's young the young eagles. eagles, Tuskegee Airmen. So the Tuskegee Airmen, of course, the pilot, the African-American pilots from World War II, there are legacy organizations across the country who will give any child a free flight, but from, you know, like you said, eight to 17. And the reason that they do it, you are so the poster child for this. The reason for this is to give kids who might not otherwise get exposure to careers in aviation, that opportunity to get a feel for it. Absolutely. And the EAA is actually the national organization, international mm -hmm. organization that sponsors the Experimental Aircraft Association. And they actually are the ones who sponsor Young Eagles flights all over America mm -hmm. every second Saturday of the year at your okay. local airport. So um, definitely look up EAA, Young Eagles, look up the Chicago Dodo chapter, the Tuskegee Airmen. They are giving airplane rides to kids still to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pilot who flew me, uh, Kim Rapier, I still yeah. know him. He's still my, I call him my avdad, my aviation father. And you know, he's he, actually being inducted into the Illinois Aviation Hall of Fame next Thursday. Yes. And um, I, I humbly nominated him to be inducted into the Illinois Aviation oh, Hall of Fame. Oh, that's fantastic. And I do I sit on it. the delegation as the that's only African-American on the delegation wow for the Illinois Aviation Hall of Fame. And I'm one of the mm -hmm. youngest inductees into mm -hmm. the Illinois Aviation Hall of Fame. Okay, let's talk about that as a starting point. So can you just give, so can you just give a little bit, when you talk about entering a, a, an industry that is primarily white and male, and you're coming in as an African-American woman, can you just give people a little bit about the scope of your, of what the Aerostar Institute does? So if you're looking at me, you're basically looking at an alicorn. And if there's anybody who loves or is familiar with My Little Pony, that is a unicorn with wings. OK, so if, if you think uniform, unicorns were pushing it enough, you know, unicorns with wings are, are even more, um, more of an anomaly. The industry is not only 90 to 95 percent white male. Mm -hmm. But that's the overall industry. This is aviation and aerospace. Mm -hmm. Sure. When it comes to airline pilots flying, less than one half of one percent. That's less than. Wow. That's less than point five. Mm. Pilots flying are African American females for commercial airlines. Less than two percent are African American mm -hmm. in total. And. To put that in scope of, of about 300,000 airline pilots flying, 150 of them are African-American wow. females. So when we talk about STEM jobs, lack mm -hmm. of representation, when we talk about uh, pilots, mechanics, aircraft, there are more mechanics, female mechanics than there are pilots. Uh, the numbers are just insane. So what we do at the Aerostar Avion Institute, um, I was the original uh, Aerostar. I actually... <laughs> I actually created the organization to be everything that I would have wanted from mm -hmm. at, for my career in aviation. Sure. When I really, when I started to teach kids about aviation and aerospace at the high school level, I realized immediately that we were way behind the curve uh, mm -hmm. when it came to exposure. When I went to flight school, again, I was one of only two African American female in flight training. Out of 200 students in four years. Why do you theory. think that is? Why do you think oh, it's, that the it, numbers are so low? I, I have a lot of theories. Mm -hmm. um, several of them revolve around white male um, patriarchy in the industry. Mm -hmm. sure. um, from the beginning of aviation, African Americans and females have been there. You talk about the women air service pilots. You look at the Tuskegee Airmen. You look at Bessie Coleman. You mm -hmm. look at Amelia Earhart. You look at Jacqueline. Um, I can't remember her last name. Uh, uh, Comrade. Uh, these mm -hmm. women have been in aviation since aviation has begun. Mm -hmm. um, just like a lot of careers, um, when you do not have a plan for inclusivity and ex and exposure. You cannot expect it to happen organically. Mm, okay. So, a and plan, so yeah. I've heard for so many years, mm. but we just can't get African-American and Latino. If they're just not interested, right? 
So I spoke to someone just yep. yesterday who runs a multi-million dollar nonprofit in the aviation industry. Yeah. She says, Tamara, we've been having these conversations for a decade, for decades. And I just want to let you know that we believe that you have cracked the code. And yes. I said, I know, because mm -hmm. if you don't get them at kindergarten, yes. you're too late. Because mm -hmm. aviation exists as a reality mm -hmm. from the time young white males are born into American society. Uh, they have dads that are pilots. They have mothers that were flight attendants mm -hmm. or pilots. Sure. They have an uncle who has a plane or my grandfather flew in World War I or mm -hmm. World, I mean, World War II. Uh, and this happened to me in flight training, right? My mm -hmm. experience with aviation was the time that I took that airplane ride. And yeah. then two years later, I showed up on campus at Southern Illinois University. There was no going mm -hmm. to my local airport. Um, sure. And, and it's not just about urban kids. I mean, there are a lot of rural kids who have had experience with aviation mm -hmm. due to agriculture, mm -hmm. farming, um, the much local airports in and around their community. That is not the case for young people that are growing up in uh in urban areas mm -hmm. we have large airports that most of them can't afford to their families don't go on, on annual mm -hmm. trips or vacation again so just the social economic pressure of uh the lack of exposure of, of aviation in general and then i think aviation mm -hmm. just gets taken for granted so i tell mm -hmm. young people all the time look at look at a tag of your clothes or look at your backpack and look at the label where was this stuff made? None of it was made in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We just take for granted that everything that we know and love in America shows up at our doorstep with the click of a button on Amazon making a purchase, mm -hmm. right? These products are being moved all over the mm -hmm. world in real time. And air cargo, logistics, um, travel, transportation, tourism, all ties back into the number one economic generator mm -hmm. of any region, and that is the airport. And 70 no, sure, sure. 70% of airport jobs do not require anything more than a high school diploma and be able to read and write English. Wow. Um, that's amazing, Justin. That can sometimes be that spark that that drives that drives people to to get interest. So thanks to Brianna for your comments. And she has a question as well. But for those who are watching live, we don't know you're here unless you say hello. So please do say hello and hey, hello. welcome. And I want to make one correction. The the even the website is avianinstitute.org. I think we had avianinstitute.com. Oh, okay. I will absolutely I want to send people to the right place for sure. I'll do that and throw it back up. I have a question for you, then we'll do a question from Brianna, or maybe it's just illuminating something that I know about you. So the other thing is what you're saying is these, this exposure doesn't happen by accident. Like it has to be planful, but here's what's amazing. And I want everyone to hear this. So when, when the woman with the hundred million dollar, I hope she's giving you like half that money or all of it. So with this woman who's now funding everything you're doing, what Tamara has done, she has like quarterly programs for kindergartners to, to get exposure to aviation. But as it goes up age by age, she's connected with after school matters for after school programs. But here's the part that I find so brilliant is that you get exposure and then what? And I feel like you keep asking that and then what? And then you solve it. So tell us about, I know you have like corporations that sponsor internships. So that and then what? What's that? What's that? track that you're following people through well the pipe, really phenomenal the pipeline like i said i was the original test dummy for aerostar <laughs> uh, i wish i had started in kindergarten but that revelation came once we realized high school was too late k through four is aero sparks mm. it's all about sparking that interest in aviation um kites balloons um trips to um <laughs> the uh airport family <laughs> vacations um uh, pictures of airport, what does it look like? Uh, mm -hmm. What type of jobs happen there? You get to fifth through eighth grade, that's where we focus on science, technology, engineering, and math, and getting kids excited about what they're actually learning at school already. Math, science, social social studies, um, uh, visit, uh, gym, and uh, language arts. So we actually tapping into what they're doing in school and helping them have those aha moments, as Oprah would call them, to where they're actually saying, you know what, I really do like working with my hands. I really do like um, mm -hmm. doing presentations. I really do like solving problems. I really do like playing video games. And a flight of simulator seems like- And they realize they can do that. Yeah. Video game. 
the high school is where we start to see the magic happen. This mm -hmm. is when young people actually start to choose a pathway. And we have developed pathways for flight, Mm -hmm. Now aircraft maintenance. So high schoolers can actually start aircraft maintenance school through oh, wow. partnership with Olive Harvey and uh, the Aviation Institute of Maintenance that just opened a brand new aircraft maintenance school on wow. 87th and Wabash in Chicago. Um, we then um, we are able to do drone licensing, private pilot ground school, as well as help wow. people get interested into the vast array of career opportunities in and around airports, which we'll be working with the That's Department amazing. of Aviation to do. And the last two, which are two of the most important ones, is our Aero Ambassador Program, mm -hmm. which uh, actually connects with kids after they've aged out of Aerostars programs but they haven't gone into the workforce yet. And so these young people, we do college oh. career readiness, we do social emotional uh, learning, we do uh, professional development, we do mock interviews, resume writing, we write a lot of letters of recommendation, we do interview prep and uh, for inter job interviews. That's amazing. And so really anything they could possibly need. You're like, and then wait, there's the a more. And then what? Is the new <laughs> The newest thing to come off wow. the runway, and it mm -hmm. is we are will be launching Arrow Work. Okay, and Arrow Work is the actual apprenticeship driven programs that get young people ages sixteen mm -hmm. to twenty five the skills and the licenses they need to go directly into the industry. We're talking about making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, two Amazing. years out of high, two years out of high school with no college degree they will have college can i can i come can i do it <laughs> i get this all the time no college degree they will have college credit through an associate degree that we developed at olive harvey and southern illinois university is working on articulating that so we can get kids all the way to a well-paying full-time job and it's all through all this partnership the partnership and most is of it is free all the way to junior year in because college. of your partners because the because partners of our partners Okay. You know, Brianna asked, just because you're talking about, you just shared so many different moments when there's like some sort of spark that connect with a, with a young person. And so her question was, how do you react when you see that spark in kids in your program, you know, that uh, you experienced? How does that feel when you know that you've connected to someone because they're excited about what they're doing? Well, a lot of times I cry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I cry a lot. They make me cry a lot. Number one, because they always come to me and tell me, I never thought about aviation being in marketing. I never thought about aviation pursuing a criminal justice. I never thought about aviation pursuing um, mm, uh, public sure. service and law, law enforcement. You know, we got young people going to the FBI. We got young people in the military. We have young people um, in uh, in marketing, in media, in visual arts. They all are in aviation and want to get in a, and, and are pursuing aviation pathways because of what we taught them. And I think this is the beauty of the Aerostars program is that unlike so many other aviation programs, we don't focus on pilots. We focus mm -hmm. on the kid. If the kid wants oh, to be a pilot, okay. perfect. Mm -hmm. If the kid wants to be a doctor, we call the FAA and I call my doctor friends at the FAA and said, I need you to come talk to some kids because they don't believe that they can be a doctor and be in, in aviation. Just had a young lady that said she wanted to be a lawyer when we were with United Airlines for Girls in Aviation Day at O'Hare. They bring in one of their 25 year legal veterans at United to talk to the young lady. Like All I ever wanted to do was be a lawyer. I never thought that I could be a lawyer for United Airlines. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have lawyers. Wow. So many jobs. So when I see that spark go off, that's a clarion call to me to reach out to my partners and my network to get the kids the thing that they need to 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 feed that passion. You know, as parents, we have to be able to when we see that spark go off in our kids, acknowledge well, we it have to be able to support it and right? support it. And so when that spark goes off to me, that's the red flag that they're ready for the next thing. They're mm -hmm. ready for the next thing. If they get excited about building bridges with macaroni, you know, I have to make sure that they learn <laughs> as soon as I can that yeah. there's a whole career in building infrastructure building at airports. Sure. And mm -hmm. uh, 
So, well, let me ask you a question. So in terms of what you've been talking about is how you recognize that spark in kids and you go out and you get, you find the right people and put it together. And it feels like, I mean, anyone who's watching right now is like, she's the most amazing, energetic person ever. So I think your, your energy and your excitement is so contagious. People just want to jump on board. But here's the other thing. You like, I, I joke, I think we were like showing our house with real estate people on March 17th, thinking like, this is just going to blow over. Yeah. You said on March 17th of 2020, that was like the day people were like, I think we're going to have to close because of the pandemic. It was like, like the 13th. That's the day the country shut down. Right. And you're like, you already knew at that moment that you needed to shift everything that you were doing. So it feels like you didn't miss a beat when like with all the work you're doing over the past two years? You know, I actually, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I am an avid <laughs> consumer of real news mm -hmm. uh, and international news. And um, anybody who knows and studies science know that viruses are here to win. Mm -hmm. um, that's what they do. They're winners. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's in them. They replicate, they mutate, they do whatever they can do to get themselves out there. When I saw what was happening in China and then over in um, in Europe, I said, there's no way. We actually put a plan in place. We were actually launching our virtual platform for adult learners to take aviation classes online. Oh, nice. Yeah. We have a lot of adults that want to get their drone licenses, want to take private pilot ground mm -hmm. school. So those were the two classes that we were focused on launching. And when the pandemic hit and school shut down, we actually switched immediately in March to moving mm -hmm. all of our programs to a virtual platform. And we wound up launching an incredible product called the Aeroverse, which mm -hmm. is the very first national platform for all things aviation and aerospace education. It's like it, we're building it to be like the Khan Academy of aviation and aerospace education wow. from kindergarten through 12th grade. Yep. Wow. Um, we've had over 500 kids um, join the Aeroverse and uh, enroll uh, in programs. And uh, we're looking for that number to probably quadruple in the next year and a half. Oh, because now you can reach more that you're online. And All right. So we have recorded content. We have content that's self-paced we it's mm -hmm. all it's all loaded in there that's amazing. So Stephanie, hi, Stephanie and hi, Brianna. So emotional intelligence, extra vivid with Tamara. And uh, Brianna says, what great foresight for sure. So we're going to shift now. There is so much. I think anyone who's watching knows like like the amount of things. I, I don't think I think that she's actually a robot because I don't see how you physically do all this and make it all happen. But an amazing also, team. You what? Yeah, an amazing, an amazing team. team. So let's take a look. That's actually my alarm, which says it is time for our flash photo stories. So here we go. So we go flash photo stories. Uh, what this is, this part of the show is where, uh, where I'm going to flash a photo on the screen and then you're going to give like a one to two sentence story about the photo. So what is happening? And this is a way I really enjoy this as just a way to really try to get even more uh, depth and breadth that we that we possibly can, because there's so much to know about Tamara Holmes. So what's happening here? So I first want to tell you about how I got this photo. I okay. went to a Tuskegee Airmen banquet um, about 2015, 2014, maybe. And uh, on the table, they had a bunch of centerpieces. Mm -hmm. And each centerpiece was wrapped in like wrapping paper with photos on them. And this, the, the centerpiece on my table um, was just there the whole night. And at the end of the night, mm -hmm. I actually was started looking at the pictures and I'm like, that jacket looks familiar. That's, that's me. <laughs> Almost 15 years after I, this photo was taken unbeknownst to me and without my knowledge, it landed on a banquet table as the wow. piece. This is how I know God is it. God is in control of all, mm -hmm. everything that I do. Not only is that crazy, that somebody took this photo. Yep. But the guy standing across, the young man standing across from me, yeah, his name's Cedric Sedwick Hines. He's now a captain for United Airlines. Wow. He was a flight instructor at Southern Illinois University when I got there. And I never even remembered that I met him the first day I ever took my first airplane ride. Wow. Until I saw this picture 
15 years later. That's so amazing. That is really an example of how a single picture can sell just, just a multi-layered story. That's phenomenal. What's happening here? Oh, this is, that picture is incredible. So these young people are all arrow sparks from the Gary Area Career Center. If anybody knows anything about Gary, it is one of the most oppressed and depressed mm -hmm. uh, communities um, in the United States of America. N more than 95% under the, live under the poverty level. Mm -hmm. um, 99% uh, in the school system are on free and reduced lunch. And Boeing made a significant contribution in our fifth in our uh, K through 12 aviation programs nice. in the Gary area. And these were the very first students uh, who actually uh, became mm -hmm. Aero Stars in the state of Indiana. This is when we launched uh, into our first, our second state. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, those young people uh, did take airplane rides that day. Uh, so to Brianna's point, um, to be able to see that spark go off and, and give kids mm -hmm. free airplane rides is just incredible. All of these students uh, were the top students out of all of the the kids in that age group at the Gary Boys and Girls Club, and mm. they were rewarded with the day at Gary Airport. Fantastic. Well, maybe that picture will show up somewhere, and they'll remember that moment when they were sparked uh, by the work that you do. So besides looking absolutely gorgeous and stunning here, what's going on? <laughs> this was actually our induction into the Illinois Aviation Hall of mm. Fame. Uh, it was a very moving um uh, gesture to be nominated by the Tuskegee Airmen um, mm. and delegates on the uh, on the on the panel to be inducted. Uh, in order to even apply to be inducted into the Illinois Aviation Hall of Fame, you have to have served uh, a minimum of ten years in mm. uh, devoting your time, energy, and talent to transform in the landscape of aviation in the state. Mm -hmm. And this is a branch of the National Aviation Hall of Fame, which I do believe we will be inducted into uh, one of these days. But uh, that was a really big deal for Aerostar to be recognized amongst our peers. I'm one of the youngest to ever be inducted into the Illinois mm -hmm. Aviation Hall of Fame and with one of the largest impacts uh, across the state of Illinois. That's really wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this picture is so funny to me because you're not going to see it until I tell you what this is. Okay. This is one of our very first field trips when we started taking young people. I, as a matter of fact, I think I had just left Landrum and Brown, uh, the firm that I worked for and went full time. Mm -hmm. This is about 2010, 2009. And uh, so I probably was still working for L&B. And, &B. and uh, mm -hmm. I took kids on a field trip to the airport and I look over and Air Force One is literally sitting out on the tarmac. Mm -hmm. That's President Obama was already elected at that time. And so all of the, I asked the bus driver to take us over there. Now, all of these guys are out there protecting the plane. Mm -hmm. And I had, um, I actually had, uh, I got, they said we could get out, but we couldn't, you know, walk closer. So if you look behind me, it says authorized vehicles only. Yes. And then right behind my shoulder, uh -huh. See that guy's uniform? Yeah. He's walking towards me with the AK-47. Oh, no. <laughs> and he's, he's yelling behind me, you can't take a picture. You can't take a picture. <laughs> and I guess what I said, you don't have to shoot me, sir. Oh, You're going to have to. No. I am taking a picture with, the, with Air Force uh. One. You know, when Obama remembered you, because I think when he did like those sparks of, you know, when he did the program in Chicago with with leaders, you were invited. I was invited so, to so the Obama Apparently you made a really and big I, impression on him. I met him twice. So, yes. That's so funny. Oh that's my like God. taking a picture with the president to me. That's that, that was that's it. That's hilarious. But, that, but you, would you would never notice that guy unless I no, told you. No, I thought he was just him. standing there. So. And this one is, um, <laughs> I, I actually manifest. I really love that in you, actually, Tamara. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I am a very, uh, you literally have to tell me no like five times, oh not just God. once. Uh, <laughs> so this is actual photo of uh, my TED, my TED experience. I manifested this TED talk. Um, mm -hmm. 
I prepared for my TED talk. I had even written my TED talk before I even knew when I was going to give a TED talk. Mm -hmm. This was in 2017. And I wound up being in a meeting with the leadership of community engagement at the Illinois Institute of Technology, which is one mm -hmm. of the most premier uh, technical mm -hmm. institutes in the country. And the lack of diversity at IIT mm -hmm. uh, amongst uh, African Americans, Latino, is staggering. Um, their diversity co is comprised of mostly international students. And um, they I was working with our IT to be able to get um, more minority students enrolled and, and on a pathway to be able to uh, apply and get accepted. And uh, I, I somehow I mentioned that mm -hmm. I was going to do a TED talk just in this meeting. Mm -hmm. And the lady was like, oh, we do TED talks here. They'll be We'll have auditions probably in about three months. Mm. Will you be ready? I said, I'm ready today. <laughs> I literally did my two minute pitch for Ted and got a standing ovation in two minutes. Wow. And I, I was the only person to get a standing ovation out of 17 talks that day. Mm. Yeah, it was incredible. That really is. My Ted talk is actually on YouTube, so you can find it. It's called Get Kids High. And uh, it's an incredible, it is an incredible experience, TED experience. Wow. Well, congratulations, you. And obviously, well-deserved. It doesn't surprise me that you were like the ones who got uh, who got standing ovation, just because the work that you do is so, is so meaningful, and then your energy is so engaging. So we have one more thing that we have to do on our show today, and this is our flash exercise. Oh, my goodness. So the flash exercise is um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove you for a second. I'm going to show you the exercise, and then um, it's a little-known genre of fitness called interpretive aerobics. Uh, you get to guess why I picked this exercise in terms of how it relates to the subject of our show. Uh, and actually, really quickly, Brianna absolutely is going to check out the TED Talk. I'll make sure we include it in a link under um, where the video lives after this so that people can link to it as well. All right. So uh, so I'm hoping you'll do this with me. Give me one. Second. I did already hit the gym this morning. So I should be, I should be. I looking. saw your arms in that, like all your sleeveless shots, your arms are like really big. All right. I'm going to make myself full screen for a second here. Uh, so here we go. All right. So this exercise is, um, it's kind of an oblique. I, I like oblique exercises because we really want to store a strong core, especially if we're sitting all the time. So what I want you to do is pretend like you have headlights on your hips and keep them shining straight, straight forward. Your hands go out to the side, palms face down, because you can do this exercise lying on your stomach as well. We're going to do it standing. Um, so your hips are facing front. Your hands are wide. Don't move your hips. What I want you to do, though, is rotate and bring one arm front and then back and then one arm front and back. So would this it's a be rotation. Called a propeller? Would this I'm, be called a propeller? Yeah, it is like a propeller. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So let me see. Are you doing it? Well, okay. So then, so then you already know why did I pick this exercise for today's show? Oh, yeah. So I did, you already got it, that it's like a propeller. I was thinking it's like zoom, like an airplane. Um, you can do this, if we do it standing, it's more for obliques. If you lie on your stomach and then just lift one arm at a time, it actually gets through your erector spinae, which is the muscles that line your spine. Okay. And then also, um, yeah, your upper back. So it's a really great one to do lying on your stomach on the floor as well. And yes, because it's like a propeller, like an airplane. <laughs> Tamara Holmes, I have so much fun every time I'm with you. It's Aww, just phenomenal you. what you do. I will point out as we're closing that um, that the Avion Institute Aerostar is a not-for-profit organization. And yeah. so uh, please feel free to check out what Tamara's doing because she's making such a huge impact. Tamara, thank you so much for being here. I look forward for more to come and just always staying in touch with you. You're thank just you, really an inspiration. Thank so, you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.